so this is, this is code, and I apologize if you're not a programmer, but um, this, this, and the reason I'm showing you this configuration struct is that you may notice that there is no actual runtime error code. So there are four or three, there's four configuration statuses that could come out of trying to configure. One is that everything worked okay, and that's great. And that's usually what, that, that is what you'll see at runtime. The other three are at development time. So you just get the SDK and you've integrated it into your game, and maybe something's not right, you'll get an error code. Wrong version. Okay, you fix that and you're done. You know, the con configuration is incorrect because you forgot a variable. This is something that you will only encounter during development, and after you fixed it once, it won't happen at runtime. And then the SDK not loaded is, again, something you didn't actually load the DLL. So those three error codes will only happen during a development process, and once you get past them, it's not something that happens at runtime. So at runtime, if any issues happen for whatever reason, uh, you can keep calling the Ansel SDK functions. They just won't do anything. I guess is, is my point is there is no fail condition here. We will not break your game. Our APIs will not cause you to crash or, call, or exceptions to happen. It just may not work, but there will be no uh, bad stuff happening, I guess is what I'm saying. So the configuration itself is relatively straightforward. Um, as I mentioned, you need to configure uh, your game and your camera system to Ansel. So Ansel primarily is really easy to use and integrate because we interface Ansel to your game, not the other way around. We don't require you to change your units or change your basis vectors or otherwise massage your data to work with Ansel. You just tell us how your data is going to be and Ansel will massage itself to you. Uh, and you do that by providing your camera basis vectors, what is right up in front. Uh, you provide the units in your world. When you move a camera, how fast does it move in your units, in, in whatever your world space units are, and how fast does it rotate? Uh, and then there's some other parameters that I'll talk about a little bit later, mostly around how to handle post-processing and temporal effects. And at the very bottom, you provide Booleans about which features of Ansel you would like to support. So if you say false for all of them, you're not gonna get much. Um, so I encourage you to try and uh, enable all of the support for all the features that make sense for your game. Yeah, so this is just illustrating what I mean by defining the camera. Um, every game engine, it seems, has a, a different idea of what is an up vector and what is left and right. I mean, if you're using left or right-handed coordinate systems, things like this. So by providing that information to Ansel, we can understand what you expect uh, and, then, and then handle it correctly when you pass your camera vectors to us. So yeah, let's, let's talk really quickly. Let me go back. So one of, the, one of the pieces of the configuration struct was this capture latency and capture settle latency. And so these are slightly complicated compared to everything else which has been really straightforward so far. The capture latency itself is, is almost never used, but it, it may be used in a couple situations where input you want to handle some latency. So capture latency is a, a number of D3D present calls to effectively let run before you update the camera. So it allows you to control the frequency with which updates to the camera happen with respect to the rendering. The second one, capture settle latency, is probably going to be used more often. And this is how many frames between a multi-part shot, and I'll, I'll explain what a multi-part shot is, how many frames between a multi-part shot you want to run presents to allow the rendering itself to settle. And this allows us to handle temporal effects like TAA or other uh, frame-dependent effects that use previous frame buffer values. And why is that a problem? The, the, the reason for this is multi-part shots, as I mentioned. So multi-part shot is either super resolution or 360 view, and these are created, let me go quickly to that, because there's an example here. I'm gonna go back and forward a little bit. Yeah, so multi-part shots kind of look like this. Come on. This is a super resolution shot where we take a whole bunch of different screenshots from different camera angles and then we composite them together. So that, that means that if you have temporal effects, the first part of the multi-part shot and the second part of the multi-part shot will be in, in different locations, drastically. The camera will snap. And so if the second rendering is dependent on the previous first rendering for something like uh, TAA or other anti-aliasing temporal effects across the frame, you're gonna get artifacts. You're gonna get artifacts because it, it has to blend in and it hasn't settled. So for things that need some time, that's what the capture settle latency is. It allows them to render for 15, 20 frames and get a steady state so that the rendering looks correct for the different pieces of the shot. So if you do have these, uh, you can use capture settle latency or you can disable them if that makes sense. So that was a configuration. Um, 
I ran through it really quickly again. I encourage you to read the docs. One thing about the Ansel SDK is that all of our function calls are, are extremely well documented, maybe to a, a point of fault, because we know that uh, developers don't necessarily read the docs, but they read code. So if you are such a developer, you will be very happy with the, the comment documentation of, of the Ansel SDK. So once you have your configuration and your game is running, the user hits Alt F2, uh, and then an Ansel session starts, or wants to start. And you get a call back from Ansel saying, hey, I want to start an Ansel session. And it's your job to say yes or no. So you may say no because, well, you're in the main menu and it doesn't make any sense. Or I'm in a cutscene, or I'm in a part of my game that I don't want to let the user start an Ansel session. So in that case, you would just say disallowed. And Ansel will say, OK. And they, they present a little dialogue to the user that says, you're not allowed to do it right now. And then they move on. If you do say yes, you, are per, you will return allowed. And when you return allowed, it, it's basically a contract between you and Ansel saying, OK, I'm going to do the things that I know I need to do to support Ansel, which is I need to pause my game. I need to pause the rendering and animation time, simulation time, basically everything. And I need to disable my UI. So when Ansel runs, especially you can imagine in a multi-part shot scenario, you don't want to have every sort of grid cell of that uh, super resolution have the UI pasted on it. It would look really bad, um, as an example. But the, in general, the users don't want to capture UI when they're in Ansel mode. So this is something that we recommend you doing. This includes the mouse cursor. Uh, Ansel provides a hardware mouse cursor uh, to interact with the Ansel UI. Uh, again, pause rendering time, and then do not, do not accept input uh, into your game. So don't uh, process controller inputs, and don't process mouse and keyboard input. And then keep that until you get the callback that the session has been stopped. Yeah, so this is kind of a graph of sort of what's going on. Uh, at the bottom, I've listed the, the function declarations for the callbacks, just for reference. But we're rendering some frames, we're presenting some frames, and then during, while we're, while we're preparing render frame K, uh, the user presses Alt F2. All right. And then the next time we hit present, Ansel will trigger that callback. And then it's your job to say yes or no. In the case that you say yes, the Ansel session will start. And then again, you have to pause, turn off your UI, turn off your mouse cursor, all that stuff. And then the user interacts with Ansel. He takes a screenshot, he moves the camera around, he does some saving, he does some whatever he wants, saves as many screenshots as he wants. And then he says, OK, I'm done. He closes the button. And then Ansel says, OK, on that next present, stop session. And then that's when you would unpause and go back to all your normal rendering. It's pretty straightforward. So this is a, a, a screenshot example of Ansel in photo mode uh, for a game called Neo, uh, where I position the camera a little bit to get a good view on this, this arrow that I'm shooting. Uh, and I don't want to go over too much on the UI, but basically, this is kind of what the UI looks like. Um, the user has a bunch of different uh, GUI elements that they can interact with, filters they can turn on and off. Uh, they can change the, the capture type from screenshot to 360 view or super res at the top. And then they can snap as many pictures as they want. And when they're done, they click done. Uh, 